we need kind of a grabby, clickbaity title for this. What can we use? What can we use? Well, that'll work well. That'll work well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Ryan118, and today we're here to talk about Celtic, right? It's the main focus of my channel, Celtic, to be honest. FIFA, Celtic. They are the two, they are the two fit football managers over there somewhere, uh, waiting on the edge. But FIFA and Celtic are what most of you subscribe to my channel for. And today I just want to talk about something that started circulating in the news yesterday. I feel like it's a real discussion. I feel like it's a point as a Celtic fan that it is good to bring up and it's good to talk about. No, I'm not just doing it hoping that every Celtic fan who passes it clicks on the video. Genuinely, I want to talk about it because it's something that I have felt like speaking about in the channel for the past little while. Not just since the news broke yesterday of this event, but from the obvious point where it got to the fact that UEFA have a complete and utter bias against small clubs. And it's not something new. They've had a bias against small clubs for a long time. They've got that group of teams waiting here on the right wing of, of, of football. Is it the right wing? It's the bad side of the left wing. I don't know. They've got all those clubs, the top clubs, Man United, PSG, Bayern Munich, all the rest of them, Real Madrid, Barcelona. They've got all those. And it was recently when they announced that the Champions League format and was changing so that 16 of Europe's biggest teams are guaranteed a spot in the Champions League. No more having to qualify for Arsenal. No more one qualifying round. Now, the rule is right now, if you finish fourth in England, if you finish fourth, fourth, to get into the Champions League, fourth, finishing fourth for the Champions League, you only had to play one qualifier. Now, actually, can you can can anybody recall the last time Arsenal were champions? Because I can't, because they get in every single fucking year, don't they? Um, but yeah, the, the rule is right now, if you finish fourth in England, you play one qualifying round, the playoff round, to get into the group stage of the Champions League. Uh, but starting from 2018, right until 2021 at, at the least, um, you don't need to play any. Every team who finishes top four in the biggest leagues, which is England, Spain, Germany, France, and Italy, I believe, might be part, they're not part of it. Italy are not part of it. If you finish top four in those leagues, you're automatically secured a place in the Champions League group stage for the following season. We'll come back to all of this because what I'm here to talk about today is Peter Law and his attempt to get Celtic an easier way into the Champions League because starting from 2018, we need to go through four rounds of qualifying just to get into the Champions League. It is absolutely ridiculous. And Peter Law has met up with <coughs> some similar clubs. We'll say clubs on a similar level. That is really similar. It's teams like Ajax, teams like Feyenoord, teams like Anderlecht. All on that same level as Celtic. Well, they do well in their individual nation. But all they can really do in the Champions League is hope to get to the group stage. That is That's the pinnacle. And if you get to the last 16, it is absolutely groundbreaking for one of those clubs. It is brilliant. If Celtic make the last 16, party. We're having a party at Celtic Park when we get to the last 16. But things are con continuously, consistently being made more difficult by UEFA just to get to the last 16 round. They have a complete and utter bias. And it has been demonstrated many times from fans around the world. Legia Warsaw fans had a display this year that shows the complete and utter bias they have for teams like Barcelona. Why why can Celtic not get the opportunity to do as well? I mean, obviously, TV, financial, miles apart between Celtic and Barcelona. But I hope this 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 format that Peter Law was want to create with other chairmen of other clubs manages to go through. So, I'm going to be taking most of my references and most of my news here from STV and the Scotsman, I believe. Last night, it was broke that Peter Law had flew over to Switzerland a couple of weeks ago to meet up with these chairmen to try and get a new UEFA Champions League structure made to make things easy for Celtic so we can actually stand a chance of qualifying. So Peter Law has proposed, let's say, these this 48-team structured tournament where Celtic will just be able to qualify. I don't know how many rounds we'll have to go through, but it would not be four rounds of fucking football. It probably one, maybe even zero if it's 48 teams. This was a meeting set up with some of UEFA's top officials, and I believe the UEFA president was present at the meeting. So these things could be potentially taken into, into consideration. That's the word I'm looking for. And hopefully we see it go through, because if Celtic are not in the Champions League, you as a Celtic fan, you know what it's like. And I can imagine it's the same for Ajax fans, for Feyenoord fans, for Anderlecht fans. 
when you don't make the Champions League, it's just not as good a season. So I'm going to actually go and refer to a couple of these things. Give me, give me a moment to get a few of the quotes and stuff from the article. Now UEFA have argued back to this proposition from Law and other chief executives and such, from other football teams, that it won't be beneficial for UEFA because of TV, they believe they'll lose money from the bigger nations and only make money from the smaller nations. And it is at this point where you do really realise the sadness that the fact that football has became a business. It is a business. It's not a sport anymore for a lot of people. And UEFA is a governing body not for the sport of football, but for the business of football. And it's really annoying. I think there's more things that should come into priorities than money being brought in from your TV viewerships when it comes to such a prestigious tournament. A tournament that has spanned from the 50s and is what every fucking football team in Europe dreams of playing. And there's teams uh, from countries that don't even have the chance to play in their top leagues and such. And, and and there's you know Champions League is not often things to be any easier. And UEFA is not making things any any easier for any team to get there. Uh, cups don't matter anymore. If you win a cup, you just go to Europa League. It's the Champions League and Celtic are having to deal with the fact they'll have to play through four, four qualifying rounds. And there's talk. There is talk of a 24-team reduction, right, I'm not meaning 24 teams taken away from, right now it's 32 teams out of the Champions League, but there's talk of it going to 24. Now, if this goes to 24, and there are 16 guaranteed places for those teams, what does that leave us with? Eight places. Now, out of those eight places, let's be realistic, how, how difficult is it going to be for Celtic to get one of those eight places? Pretty damn difficult when you think of the competition they're probably going to have to deal with to get one of those eight places. If things are ridiculous, the top clubs are getting everything handed to them on a silver platter while we're left here to watch. We're left here, one of, the first ever British team to win the fucking tournament. Uh, and one of the biggest teams in world football. Well, well known throughout the world, and the fact that we might need to fight for a eight, one of the eight only places in the Champions League is absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to be referring down here in a minute. So the Bayern Munich chairman has threatened if it goes up to this 48 team structure that that Law and and other chief executives are chief executives are are proposing. They are threatening to walk out of the tournament and not participate in the Champions League. That is absolutely ridiculous. Right, being being realistic, Bayern Munich. Right, being realistic. When Bayern Munich come up against, say, Rostov, it's not going to threaten them much. I believe 48 teams still gives them a rather good fucking chance of getting to the final. It's no difference to them. It's just actually giving the teams who are smaller and want the opportunity a chance you're giving them a chance while it doesn't affect them whatsoever. Rostov, Celtic, anybody is not going to go and be able to beat Bayern Munich and knock them out of the Champions League. Well, you never know. It could happen. But being realistic, is it going to happen? And for Scottish football, this, 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 this just doesn't affect Celtic. This affects every single team to do with Scottish football. It affects the coefficient system. Now, if you don't know what the coefficient system is, I'm not going to go and explain it in this video. It's a very lengthy process to explain. But for Scotland's coefficients, it does not help us one bit. There is going to be not one bit of success in Europe for any Scottish team in any sort of near future if this goes through. And it's not just a thing for Celtic, it's for teams, Rangers, Aberdeen, Hibs, Hearts. There's never going to be an opportunity for them to go and fight to be able to get in the Champions League, perhaps in the near future, in Europa League, potentially falling away for them as well, as we probably would drop down the coefficients. Now, in the near future, the hope is that Scottish football gets to a point where it rises in the coefficients and opens up a place for a second Champions League spot. There used to be two Champions League spots for, for, for Scotland, and then we filled in the coefficients, and now it's only one. But if it goes back to two, there's a chance there for another piece of success, but with this new rule, never going to happen. So it's not just Celtic, it's every team in Scotland who are going to be affected by this. And Peter Law was going out there and he stated, he's not just doing this for the benefit of Celtic, he's doing it for the benefit of other European clubs, and for the benefit of Scottish football. Well, he stated that at the meeting, Apparently. I just wanted to make this video to, to, to raise my point and raise what I think on the matter. I might make some follow-up videos on it. I feel like I might have repeated myself quite a lot in the video. But it's just my opinion. I just wanted to talk about it and, and see what you guys took from the video. I want to know your guys' opinions on the whole UEFA Celtic and UEFA small club situation in the comments below. So let me know. That is just my opinion in general. I feel like UEFA are just <laughs> day by day. UEFA, FIFA, every world governing body, every big governing body for, for football is just is just screwing over teams like Celtic when we have such a big part to play 
and it means so much to the fans and to the players of the team and the and the club's history in, in general. So that's my opinion. If you guys enjoyed the video, uh, like and subscribe. I feel like this will be a video I could probably get a lot of hate on, but fuck it, fuck it. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.